This patient is a three and a half year old male intact French bulldog that had a urinary obstruction. He was dribbling urine, straining to urinate, had a very large, firm, and painful urinary bladder on palpation. He was also mildly azotemic. So we took a look with ultrasound. We're going to find the urinary bladder. Then as we move caudal, I will point out the caudal urethral junction, which is extremely dilated in this dog because he's unable to pee. I look around a little bit. There's some scant free fluid, which could be inflammatory or potentially a urinary rupture. I go ahead and measure the caudal urethral junction just for a baseline. And here's a still picture of it being severely distended. So I set up, we talked to the owner, she approves urinary deobstruction. Get your sterile gloves, your sterile lidocaine, and your sterile lubricant ready. Get all your supplies ready. You can see my assistants here are prepping the patient. They've shaved the prepucial area. They're also flushing the prepuce with dilute chlorhexidine solution. Once we get the patient all ready, my assistant is going to extrude the penis for me. I get my lub lubricant, which I really like to mix my sterile lubricant with sterile lidocaine jelly to help with some diff additional local analgesia. I see after trying this um, urinary catheter placement that this is going to be very difficult. I can feel the stone. I have my assistant flush, but after flushing in about 30 mils or so, I realize this dog's bladder is way too big and I'm going to have a difficult time deobstructing him without first emptying his bladder. So I feel his bladder. It's really firm, really dilated. We decide to go ahead and perform a cystocentesis. This is going to help relieve pressure from the urinary bladder and potentially make my catheterization easier. So we like to use a butterfly needle just because it gives us a little extra space and room to attach our syringe to it. You can see that the catheter is easily placed using ultrasound guidance to the bladder and we end up removing about 210 mils of urine before trying again with our attempted urinary catheterization. This dog has had midazolam IV at a pretty high dose, methadone IV for analgesia. He's also on propofol. The most common mistake I see is people not fully anesthetizing this dog. These dogs are extremely painful and you absolutely will not be able to unobstruct them unless they are fully anesthetized. So I'm gonna try again after emptying the dog's urinary bladder. I've got my polypropylene catheter and I'm gonna pass it I encounter resistance a couple of inches into the prepuce, so I have my assistant pulsate the sterile warm saline into the catheter. And as she's pulsing the sterile saline, I'm trying to advance my catheter into the urethra. Eventually, in this case, I actually am able to dislodge the stone. You can see me advancing my catheter here, and I pretty easily get into the urinary bladder. There were a couple of small, tiny stones that came out were actually present on my patient's towel. And there were also multiple stones that I was able to flush back into the urinary bladder. Once I get everything unobstructed, I want to go back in one more time, make sure I lavage this urethra very thoroughly to make sure there are no remaining stones. You can see I pass this catheter quite easily and I go ahead and remove the urine one more time. I'm going to leave that polypropylene catheter in place while we gather our supplies for the indwelling catheter placement. I'm gonna switch sides with my assistant because she wanted to learn how to do a urinary catheter placement. So um, twiddling my thumbs, kind of looking around, I decide to go ahead and, and prep the prepuce one more time with some chlorhexidine. My assistant is getting her sterile gloves ready and her sterile Foley catheter. So she removes the temporary polypropylene catheter now she's got a Foley, I believe it was a size 10 French. You always have to check the balloon of the Foley first before placing it in case it's dysfunctional, similar to how you do with an ET tube. The patient was not able to be catheterized with the Foley we tried. So then we decide to go and try a wired Foley because this patient just has a lot of trauma to his urethra. We figure a wired Foley will be easier to get in. We prep the catheter. We advance the catheter, it goes in fairly easily. They're just checking the balloon and also activating the uh, inside lubricant on this wire. So my assistant is able to pretty easily pass this Foley once it is wired, it's a little bit more stiff. So we go in, 
We want to check the placement. We did pre-measure and we think we're in the bladder. We're going to check with ultrasound. We're actually going to infuse a little bit of sterile saline into the catheter and watch it on ultrasound to ensure that we're in the correct place. And as you do that, you can actually see the stones and the crystals swirling around inside of the urinary bladder. It's pretty cool to see. We confirmed that we're in the bladder, so now we're going to inflate the balloon of the Foley to make sure this stays in place. And then at that point, we're going to hook up to our closed collection set here. We had to put a total of five mils of saline into the balloon to keep it secure. I give it a gentle tug to make sure it's not coming out. It feels secure. And here are the stones that I see that I moved from the urethra into the 